This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. We have a saying in English, never judge a book by its cover. When I saw the book, Diesel Electric 4030 by Henry Billings being discarded, I thought it had outlived its life. After all, it was written in 1950. Well, that would have been such a loss because the basics of diesel electric locomotives have not changed at all in all these years. And this book's easy to read wording and clear sketches make it valuable in understanding the technology that moves trains across our land. Billing takes readers on an imaginary but realistic run between Harmon and Albany, New York. His illustrations show readers how a locomotive works, including how it powers all the train systems. One of my favorite illustrations is the one showing the railroad signaling system and how it works. There's a lot to love in this old book. Getting your hands on one could be tricky. Search your library or used bookstore for Diesel Electric 4030 by Henry Billings from Viking Press. It's an oldie, but a goodie. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is Episode 2, Segment 2. During Episode 1, we left off with a word list, and here it is. These are words that we picked up from the video clip we, pay, we played in the third segment. The homework was to establish which words we knew and to find the meaning of those words we didn't know. Considering our viewers are intermediate English learners, here are some of the possible findings. Remember, this is just an example. Everyone's assignment will look different, of course. English learners who don't know the word commuter could be stumped here. Watching the video clip again may be necessary to get this one. We'll let it slide and see if it comes up again. It may be, I may be pretty certain that the word coal is the same as the Spanish word carbon if I'm a Spanish speaker. That's what this looked like in the video clip, so I'm pretty sure that's it. Freight containers. I saw the containers when hearing these words, so I have a picture in my mind what freight containers means. As we say in English, a picture is worth a thousand words. Another picture, the man in the funny hat, is there when you hear the word conductor. These are good examples of how context provided here by video clips can help you expand your English vocabulary. Keep doing this when you hear or read words that you're not familiar with or you're unsure of. Now we're going to watch a video about freight trains. In this video, we'll learn about train yards and freight containers. Now that we've already seen clips about freight containers, let's see how much you understand of the narration. You can see the letters BNSF on these locomotives. It stands for the Burlington Northern Santa Fe. The name of the railroad company made up of two railroads that were separate in the past, the Burlington Northern and the Santa Fe. These tracks on the Washington side of the Columbia River are also used to carry half of Amtrak's Empire Builder passenger train. That half of the train leaves Portland and joins with the Seattle-Washington half in Spokane, Washington. There they go to Chicago as one train. The Empire Builder was built by the Great Northern Railroad. That's the port area over there, obviously. Big old warehouses here, big old cranes to unload the ships. And this is the railroad yard. This is the gigantic Oakland Rail Yard in California. The port here receives ships from all over the world. Freight is moved from the ships to the railroad into the trains where it's moved east. So is this the kind of yard your your brother worked in? Yeah. What's here? You know, This would be the yard. This is the yard then. Huh? Except that's at Union Pacific, but somewhere. Because he did. In here, he was working out of the Oakland. Trains are serviced here, 
and freight cars are taken off some trains and put onto other trains to take them to their destinations. This huge train yard was built by Southern Pacific Railway Company in the past, but today it belongs to Union Pacific. They bought out Southern Pacific. Union Pacific now owns Southern Pacific Railroad. You can see lots of freight containers, some stacked up to five high. Containerized freight is very popular today. Many of these containers are from China, where the United States gets much of its products, things people buy. This large equipment is for taking containers off of ships and putting them on railroad cars. The United States takes in, or imports, more products than it sends out, or exports. These products are moved from the west coast to the rest of the country by train or by truck. And here you can see train cars carrying these freight containers. This freight train has already gone east as far as El Paso, Texas. It's moving slowly through the area of the passenger station. It will pick up speed when it gets out of the city. In many places, there are more than one set of train tracks. That way, more than one train can pass at a time. Train yards can have as many as 50 parallel tracks, or even more. This is a train going through an urban tunnel. In some freight switching yards, train locomotives have no engineers. They are moved by remote control. While freight trains often go slow in cities, they move fast when they're out of town. These are cars for carrying wood products, known as skeleton cars, because of their appearance when they're unloaded. In part three, we'll see inside of a locomotive on Ramping Up Your English from Let's Create Productions. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, a program for intermediate level English learners. This is segment two of episode two. I'm John Letts. Our next language function is to describe the function of a thing. We'll describe the function of a train yard. Thinking back on the video clip, we saw many sets of parallel tracks leading to buildings, equipment, and other trains. One of the functions mentioned in this video was that of servicing the trains. Another function was to switch rail cars to send the freight to its destination. Another function in the Oakland, California yard was to take freight containers off the ships and set them onto railroad cars. Here are some sentences that relate these functions of the Oakland train yard. The freight yard is where trains are serviced. The freight yard is where cars are switched to reach their destinations. The freight yard is where cargo containers are moved to rail cars. Now, these are very good correct sentences relating the functions of a train yard. Let's look at a way of using an equal number of sentences to perform the same function but at a slightly different level. The freight yard performs multiple functions important to railroads. Trains are serviced there and cars are switched to facilitate movement to their destinations. Additionally, this particular yard contains equipment for lifting cargo containers from ships and placing them on rail cars. These are no more correct than the first group of sentences. They're just at a higher level of register. Don't worry about remembering these. This exercise is an experience in exposure and patterning. We'll get into details later. You're watching Ramping Up Your English. This is episode two, segment two. Our language function was using English to describe the function of something. Your homework, if you decide to do it, 
is to write some sentences in your notebook describing the function of objects in your kitchen. Some ideas might be the stove, the sink, the cabinets. Write these the best you can in your current level of English. And that's it for segment two. We'll start segment three right after this.